Welcome everyone, Costini here with Medieval 2 Total War and Sieges. I have a castle siege over here that I am going to play. I have a pretty formidable army, though it is an early game army. So I got myself a bunch of dismounted feudal knights, a bunch of peasant crossbowmen, a bunch of armored sergeants, catapults, some feudal knights, and the general bodyguard. As well as, quite crucially, a bunch of catapults that I'm going to use. Now, it's interesting to think back of Medieval 2, because the way ranged works in Medieval 2 is you don't have the red, uh, the red circles to indicate what the range of units are. Though, of course, units can and will, generally speaking, be more effective if you are shooting at point-blank range than from a distance. Now, in this case, in this castle, if I were to attack the main gate, that would be a surefire way of getting my entire army killed in short order, because you've got these four towers at the gate itself, and then two towers close enough. So attacking the main gate is a pretty good way of getting your units killed. Far better to build early game artillery as quickly as you can in a campaign, and do what I'm going to do here. Now, Medieval 2 is held as the gold standard uh, for a total war game. It's kind of interesting thinking about how Medieval 2 was actually built as a game, because what CA wanted to do, after spending a significant amount of money uh, developing Rome 1, and I think they almost bankrupted themselves, or they did bankrupt themselves, and that's the reason Sega got their hands on them. Uh, but Medieval 2 was built on the engine of Rome 1 as kind of a cheap game that uh, C could make money from. It ended up being arguably the best game in the series or the series or one of the best games in the series to this very day. And that isn't really an exaggeration. The battles um, were slower, more deliberate, and there were, you know, genuine improvements in quite a few ways, which is really what you'd expect from a sequel. Now, when we're thinking about sieges, attacking a castle like this is very much suicide. Like, this is a, a, the equivalent of, what, the Tier 4 castle? It's certainly at least the Tier 3 castle in the game. But, and there's not quite the full stack but there is a substantial number of defenders over there. So a direct assault over here is, in a lot of ways, suicide. Because the chances of my army being able to break through the defenders is not exactly a high one. So there's many, uh, there's quite a lot of chances that my guys are just gonna end up being killed over here uh, trying to uh, trying to overcome uh, the defenders over here. Excellent. Now, this is walls. fine because of other reasons. It's fine because a battle like this in an actual campaign is actually fairly rare. It doesn't happen all that often. In fact, it's, as I said, exceptionally rare for a battle of this kind of nature to uh, happen in the campaign in the first place. So that's something you gotta account for. How often does a battle of this uh, nature take place in a campaign? Very rare, as opposed to what we get in this day and age in uh, Total War games, where having a siege battle against a formidable defensive force is pretty much something you're gonna do numerous times throughout uh, the course of a campaign. And you know what, if I could just... If I could just take down one tower, that would be great. Ballistas would do better, though they do less damage against buildings. And we do have uh, the towers that are gonna start shooting at me. Now, my range units are not particularly useful. They're not going to be particularly useful on the attack. And you can see the AI is also going to start spreading its units around uh, to try and avoid some of the damage 
I am going to do to it. And the tower is going to start shooting. So now that I've exhausted the ammunition of my catapults, for the most part, what do I do now? Well, a direct assault, as I said, is going to get a lot of my guys killed. Realistically, if this was a campaign siege, I would actually choose not to fight it. At least not this way. Either I'd bring significantly more artillery to take down more of the towers, make more openings in the wall, or do multiple assaults, or I would just not attack it, uh, this particular settlement at all, and try and lure the defenders out, or a significant portion of the defenders out of their defensive location. Because again, trying to attack here directly is a surefire way of getting my guys killed. As it should be in a siege. Because in a siege, it shouldn't be that uh, that uh, an, uh, someone assaulting it with equal numbers to the defenders, they really shouldn't stand a chance. The fact that you can realistically win in modern Total War games in a situation like this is, by many accounts, quite... A ridiculous situation. You know what? Let's bring the let's bring the catapults closer because we can and we can try and do some damage. Of course, you can abuse artillery to kill a lot of the defending army that's trying to hold you back. So let's try how far, how close we need to get in order to make that work. By the way, this kind of bow is going to result in enormous casualties for my army. Uh, not sure that's a good idea but that's fine because as stated there are very very few battles of this nature it would be easier if i had trebuchets don't get me wrong but trebuchets are a higher tier unit that are difficult enough to get even catapults is going you have to sacrifice a significant amount in order to get catapults relatively early in a campaign and well, the thing about catapults is they're not quite great for uh, for field battles, so you're sacrificing. Uh, so you're sacrificing quite a bit. In terms of, uh, you're you're sacrificing quite a bit in terms of your army power and your economy in order uh, to uh, get catapults this early. And while they're great at knocking down the walls and giving you the openings you need to be able to, well, win, if you will. Can we move them in? Yes, we can. So we're gonna just do that. And also move crossbows. And yes, the AI is stupid in a lot of ways. They're just going to get their guys uh, torn to shreds. But complaining about AI in uh, older Total War games, it's kind of besides the point, right? Uh, the AI doesn't really matter all that much. I'd argue. <laughs> well, it would be it would have been great if the AI in older Total War games was improved. Don't get me wrong, like looking at Unrom remastered. I mean, kind of was, I guess, but uh, still not a really good uh, situation over there. And yeah, we're just gonna move the catapults, trying to do some damage with them. Yeah, <laughs> artillery inside the settlement to help win against the uh, 
uh, defender. Yeah, they're moving. Let's get him in there. But here's here's the reason a battle like this works, whereas a long siege where you lose a lot of units ends up being fairly annoying in a modern total war game. It's the frequency of the battles. See, battles don't exist in isolation. They never have, they never will. Unless you're playing a skirmish or a multiplayer match. Though, how much people care to actually play sieges in a multiplayer match, that's a discussion in its own right, in many ways. Suffice to say, probably not all that much. Not in a, uh, not in a tournament uh, format, to say the least. Alright, let's get uh, my units. I'm gonna get my range units. Ooh. Gonna get my knights. But since they're rare, they're not that annoying. And here's the thing. Here's a cr critical difference. All right, let's just stop shooting on those. That's just gonna get my guys killed. All right, enemy general destroyed. There is a significant morale benefit, but only for units in this particular circle. So if like, this is uh, bad tactics on my part actually, because I've allowed the AI to form up in the circle. I didn't manage to pursue them, if you will, to get out of that circle. So now I'm just gonna have to kill them all. I'll manage it, I think, though certainly not easily, but I will manage it. There's some defenders shooting at us. The castle itself. But now we get to use our crossbowmen more or less at point blank range. But what would you do in a re in a battle like this if you actually uh, had to if you actually were in a situation in a campaign where you encountered an army like this in a settlement, which again is rare because the, because there's no garrisons the way they are they they exist in a modern total war game. Instead, what you get, what the defender gets, is like a couple of slots where they can have units stationed for no upkeep. That is how the situation works. Well, most of the time, settlements will be de defended by a couple of units. And also, not every settlement is a castle. Most of them are cities, right? Like the, like the ratio of cities to castle certainly favors cities. So actually having to fight in a castle to begin with is not necessarily something that happens all that often in a campaign. And furthermore, because of the way armies work in Medieval 2, well, okay, let's say you're besieging a castle and maybe there's, you know, a handful of defenders, which is realistically the situation you're going to encounter more stuff. And like, there's a couple of units held up in a castle. You can assault it and take casualties in the process, especially if you're lacking in catapult, siege, all that. Or, what you can do is, okay, you just leave a couple of units, maybe a general, maybe you just leave a unit to besiege this element. You hope that defenders will try and sally out, try and break through you. But the rest of your force, whatever units you have free, they can go on and do other things in that campaign. They can go fight other battles, they can take less defended cells. Because you can form armies of single units if you so want to. You don't need a general to have an army. They're led by captains. And hell, having armies led by captains is an advantage because then you might, you know, get some generals from a captain that does pretty well. You have that particular event that can be triggered. All right, let's just pull our general out. Try and keep them alive. 
I like how it is, like, it's a messy, blood-infested place. Oh, yeah, blood in a base game. Imagine that in a Total War <laughs> game. Imagine having blood by default and not having to pay a DLC for it. Yeah, it's like one of the things that I'm salty about, like, as someone who's played the series for a long time. Now, sure, Rome didn't have blood, but, you know, this is why Medieval 2 is the better game, right? Because it did improve on things. The settlement mechanic, merchants, diplomats, you name it. Which, by the way, they added in, uh, in Rome Remaster. Let's do a cavalry charge over here. But the campaign dynamic that is featured just ends up being significantly better. Which means individual battles like this, like, instead of being annoying, they're kind of a treat. Because, yes, they require effort, they're going to require sacrifice. But if you have to fight a full stack of units in a settlement, you're choosing to do so. You're not forced to do it. Also, because the AI is not uh, using a Dyson Sphere in a campaign, even on the highest difficulty. Yes, they do get benefits, don't get me wrong. But it's not of the nature where they just have unlimited benefits. Um, unlimited benefits. It's still worthless to use siege towers and rams and ladders, though you can go down to, uh, ladders in in this. Like, you're not stuck uh, up them. Um, whereas, uh, given the way pathfinding works, like, it is incredible to think that for all the pathfinding issues Medieval 2 has, and it does have them, let's not sugarcoat that, for all the pathfinding issues that Medieval 2 has them, it still manages to do some things that modern total war games just flat fail to do let's get these guys over here try and take down those armored spearmen right, so they're going to go down soon enough over there and now we are going to win I reckon just gotta wait for a timer, take control, or just kill everyone in sight. One of the things I could have done is launched uh, sneak, like a, I, I could have launched or direct assault on another portion of the wall, maybe draw the defenders and sneak in, and snuck in and took the victory point and won there. It likely wouldn't have worked. Uh, the nasty skulker strategy that people use in Warhammer for you just doesn't end up working quite as well in Medieval 2. Like, if I had to fight sieges like these constantly in a campaign, yeah, they'd be annoying as hell. But you don't have to fight sieges like this constantly in a campaign. You have to fight maybe a handful of them, if even that. Though artillery is still king, king in winning these kind of sieges. Like, if you, like, one of the things you can do to really make your life a lot easier is get trebuchets as quickly as possible. Because, you know, once you, once you get, um... Once you get trebuchets, like, it becomes a heck of a lot easier. But you're also not in the same kind of rush, because the AI, again, doesn't have the same kind of benefits. So, you know, you can take your time, build up your settlements, build up your armies, and then go on the offensive, as opposed to what happens in modern Total War games. Like, the context surrounding battles, like, battles never exist in isolation in a Total War game. That's one of the points I'm getting at here. They never have, and they never will. So, how many battles do you have? Like, is it something like, oh, you just won a difficult siege, it took you a while, you suffer significant casualties. On to the next one, that's how modern Total War feels. And yeah, I won. By the way, while I had the troop numbers advantage, really the advantage came down to... Uh, like, ultimately, it just basically came down to the guys that I had in the catapults. Otherwise, they had just as much heavy infantry and range units as I did, and yeah cavalry as well now i i don't think sieges necessarily in medieval 2 were that much better you know pathfinding issues using ladders and towers good way of getting your guys killed trying to go for the main gate with the ram and get getting destroyed by burning oil surefire way of getting your killed but what makes them better is not how they play though yeah the defender has a significant advantage against the attacker, which is, by the way, how it should be. Um, and even a handful of units, like, what you do in a castle like this is, like, a handful of units can inflict staggering damage on an attacker, unless the attacker has artillery to just break down the walls, in which case, yeah, you lose that advantage. But 
the important thing is the context surrounding siege battles that makes them better because a battle like that extremely rare not gonna happen all that often in a campaign especially early on later on yeah it becomes more frequent you might have to pull out the guns quite literally the cannons in order to make short work of them the individual mechanics of battles aren't necessarily better but the fact you don't have to do this again and again and again and again a hundred times in a campaign is what adds to it because it makes each individual battle feel more meaningful and on top of that and on top uh, on top of that like yeah if you face a full stack of units in a siege it's gonna be a bloodbath in a lot of ways for obvious reasons and you don't get replenishment in this game so it's the campaign mechanics from my perspective that really make sieges in medieval 2 better not how the sieges ultimately work themselves of course there are things that medieval 2 does much better in terms of battle gameplay and siege gameplay that you know far surpass anything they've done since then that's a different discussion but it's it, it is that context let's say you know i was facing a siege like this in a campaign well how i would how would i go about dealing with it well i might just not fight at all just continuously lay siege or try and lure the defender out to annihilate them in a, an open field battle and then take their settlement or because uh, yeah you might force that you might lull them in a false sense of security or leave enough troops to continue the siege while rest of my forces you know i detach the rest of my forces or i leave a captain in charge of the siege while my general my king uh, they go about and deal with other things like taking minor settlements that are far easier to take where yeah a ram will take you know will break down uh the lesser city gates right especially the ones with wood uh, with wooden walls, they'll do so. Creates a far better dynamic where besieging a settlement for multiple turns to force the defender to cap capitulate is a perfectly viable tactic in a way that isn't in a modern Total War game because in a modern Total War game, wasting time to besiege settlements is one of the worst decisions you can make. Whereas in Medieval 2, it's not one of the worst decisions you can make. That's where I stand. Questine here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more. Maybe I should play a Medieval 2 campaign again.